I am a Hong Konger. Uh, I have to protect Hong. I have to protect Hong Kong. Hong Kong is my home. I want freedom, or you just kill me. I really feel sorry for these young people. You know, they sing songs like uh, "Glory to Hong Kong." I don't. I really wonder whether they understand what they are doing. You know, what uh, what deal can they get better than one country, two systems? Do they really think that Hong Kong can have self rule or self determination or independence? Do you think U.S. and U.K. will help them, give them passports? Do you think U.S. will take all the arsonists or uh, young criminals who inflicted grievous bodily harm? They'll just take one or two young person as the poster boy of Hong Kong's quest for freedom and then finished. Everything started in early 2019 when Kerry Lam, the chief executive, without much warning or preparation to the public, uh, came out and said, look, we have to reform this extradition treaty or ordinance and to open a floodgate that over the past 20 odd years, no previous uh, chief executive had ever mentioned about. That is to allow Hong Kong sending criminals across the border to mainland China. This at the end of the day, it was around 11 o'clock, shortly after the march came to an end. Kerry Lam issued a statement and said, I respect your voice, but I'll continue and soldier on because I've support, I've good support. So people were not uh, happy and in fact, very angry. It has become a typical pattern. Every protest that started as peaceful demonstration would quickly morph into road blockage, you know. On 9th June, after the, the large numbers of mass protesters, they w went home, immediately a splinter group, a violent, a radical splinter group started blocking the roads, throwing bricks at Lechco. Now these are criminal acts. And on 12th June, because we were supposed to resume second leading debate of the rendition bill. Police estimated 40,000 surrounded this building, occupying, you know, the Tamer Park. They again blocked all the roads to this building. Some officials and policemen were blocked in their vehicles for eight hours. I was prevented from coming to this building. It was a dead juncture that the police start firing tear gas and uh, uh, bin bullets and rubber bullets, etc. That really upset people because no matter how much we do, still, it was disproportional from the part of the police. You shot at the Hong Kong people, albeit not real bullets, but still harmful enough. So people thought, hey, this is not right. We are simply demanding, we are not asking for anything extra. We are simply asking you to stop the bill and you shot at us. So that laid a foundation for 2 million people march on Sunday, 16th of June. And <laughs> never forget, it was the day after Carrie Lam said she would suspend the bill. Double the size of people turn out. Why? We have to ask that question. It was because of police brutality that took place on the 12th of June, and also the very arrogant attitude from the side of government. I still remember on the day, I was also on the street and police was nowhere to be seen. But Hong Kong people still managed to make it a peaceful demonstration.
。香港一直以嚟咧，啲人即係都係啲和平、理性、非暴力嘅。基本上我哋咧最自豪嗰樣嘢咧，就係香港人遊行咧就好，有啲人話香港係遊行之都嚟噶嘛，經常都有遊行噶嘛。但遊行嘅過程裏面咧，基本上咧，佢哋人唔會打爛一塊玻璃，唔會毀壞一件公物。咁所以我哋咧自豪就係我哋一個最文明嘅示威嘅城市，其他嘅城市你見到㗎係嘛？打砸搶咩都會發生㗎，但係我哋冇㗎嘛。咁所以我哋嘅印象咧，覺得就係話基本上即係唔可能會到到而家咁樣嘅發展咯。同埋咧，即係即係我自己嘅感覺咧，我覺得就係其實可能我哋啲咁樣嘅和平理性非暴力咧，可能已經即係太耐啦。They went from uh, bad to worse. They actually lay siege to this building, vandalized this building. Well, my first gut reaction was, hang on, how can you, I mean, it's totally unexpected. And I was wondering, where's the police? I was shocked. That would not have been allowed in any territory. You know, I was disappointed that the police left Lechko because they thought they were outnumbered. They actually left Lechko. You know, for several hours there was no one to protect us. I was really shocked and angered and disappointed by that. In the U.S., you know, Jane Fonda, 81 was arrested twice just for demonstrating peacefully outside Capitol building. In the US, in many countries, in, Japan, in Tokyo, in London, you can't demonstrate outside the legislature. This is crazy. And you talk about Hong Kong's suppression of freedoms? Quite ridiculous. <laughs> they sacked this building up to fourth floor, and we have one or two legislators actually leading them into the building, telling them where our properties, giving them advice on the physical layout so that the violent protesters could vandalize our building. This是一個畫面,我想回想回來,對我自己也是一個很大的衝擊 向政府一個宣戰,同埋就話俾我哋一班老一輩嘅人聽,就話你哋爭取咗幾廿年嘅爭取唔到嘅話,我哋用我哋嘅方法去爭取。同埋佢當時呢,佢哋都只不過係打
you have one first and foremost duty. That is to protect the Hong Kong people. Of course, I heard complaints that the Yunnan police station, you know, lower their gates, you know. I think there may be, I'm not sure, maybe a misjudgment on the part of the commander that they might be outnumbered. Because prior to that, there had been uh, petrol bomb attacks on police stations. You have guns, right? You have guns. You can either, sh you can either sh shoot uh, on top to know that, to let everyone know police is coming, right? In the reality, the that two police turn back and uh, go away because of dangerous, because they think it is dangerous. It is means that the doctors don't need to save the people because there are too many fires. It is dangerous. Or the uh, firefighter don't need to put out the fire because there's too much fire. It is dangerous, right? A large number of our officers and their families have their personal data unlawfully collected and leaked, a practice known as doxing. They also suffer all sorts of harassment, including nuisance call, verbal intimidation, and even death threats. Some online comments incite others to commit crimes. They include making explosives, starting fires, using slingshots, petrol bombs, and other offensive weapons to damage police premises to hurt and even murder police officers and their families. We witnessed a complete change of attitude toward protesters in August. It was more unkind. It was more they did not give you sufficient time to go. Before that, the police somewhat allowed protesters to leave and go. But in August, it somewhat became chase, arrest, beat up. And the beating up was way more uh, uh, than necessary. Well, from our point of view, is uh, the inadequacy of the police effort to contain the riots. They were emboldened by the inadequacy of police power. Actually, our campaign, when Lechko was sacked and when the liaison office was uh, attacked, our campaign had been, why didn't the police deploy water cannons earlier? We gave them money to buy them. That's what they are there for. And the police kept telling us uh, they're not yet ready, they haven't finished the training. We were very unhappy. You know, the police are supposed to be there to uphold law and order. And I think this re it remains true that the rioters, you know, that violence on their part has been escalated because they have seen through the fact that our police are outnumbered. And they use force with great care because of political pressure. It was a strong piece of evidence that these police force treated Hong Kong people like their enemies. We cannot just take highly generalized accusations of quote police brutality at face value. You know, if you have a complaint, the complaint must be substantiated by facts. For example, the girl uh, whose eye was shot uh, at Kim Sha Choi Station, she has not been able to produce any concrete evidence that the projectile was from the police. In fact, the police obtained a warrant, you know, to get the medical report. And I heard the victim apply for judicial review of the warrant. What, what, what is she worried about? Can't she go public? Hmm? If there is hard evidence that she was hurt by a beanbag round or rubber bullet, she would have come out and cry foul.
We decide to have a rocket in the airport is because we want to let the tourists to know what is happening in Hong Kong. We want them to know and hope them they can bring this message back to their own country or their own hometown. The ball is always in the court of the Hong Kong government. In action, the attitude of not responding simply adds fuel to people's determination to escalate their actions. And the blockage of the Hong Kong International Airport was one of the incidents. It's very unfortunate and causing so much inconvenience to lots of international passengers and travelers. The action they took to make their views heard is totally disproportionate. After the chief executive has, has said the bill had been postponed, that was in August, she hasn't said it will be withdrawn yet. But to press the demands, you know, you shut down an airport. The, the method they've chosen to adopt to put pressure on governments, totally disproportionate to their demands. Think of the damage to large numbers of people and the damage to Hong Kong's reputation by shutting down the airport for two days. And the harassment of the travelers has uh, really gravely damaged our reputation. Highly reprehensible, highly irresponsible. The anti-China character became increasingly clear. Even during the siege of the airport, remember, they um, sort of beat up people from the mainland. They were very hostile to people from the mainland. They actually beat up a mainland reporter. Right. <laughs> 即使你幾咁憎恨呢個人都好,佢當時出現咗呢個環境之下呢,似乎幾令到人哋反感嘅,但你冇理由去攻擊佢㗎嘛,係咪啊,綁住佢啊,咁就有啲人忍唔住去打
at the stations near, near certain uh, protesting areas that left the protesters on the ground without anywhere to, you know, without any channel to go home. If we have protests in Qingwen, then they post the uh, MTL station, uh, uh, Qingwen MTL station or the uh, MTL station nearby. And we were, we were not happy because, oh man, hey man, we have paid, right? After the protest, we still have paid, right? And you dis do this to betray, betray us. And we are really angry about that. So we have to do this. Just because they think the MTR is majority owned by the government, it's actually, you know, works with the government, partners with the government, because um, they use the MTR for escape, you know. And uh, when the MTR shut down the routes, you know, makes it difficult for them to be water all over all different districts. You know, it tempers the work, so they take out the anger on the MTR. But by doing so, they punish a lot of innocent people, and they damage public property. Totally unjustified. If you ask me, I think I'm going to get a little bit of 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 a little of the violence on National Day, where we are concerned, we were anticipating it. Because we know, we know these protests, not just about the extradition bill. During the uh, October 1st, 2nd riots, of course, they were roaming across the city, trashing Bank of China, China Travel Service, and Maxim Caterer's outlets, just because uh, someone related to the family uh, spoke in Geneva against poli accusations of police brutality, you know. That, that sort of action totally in, in conflict with their supposed support for freedom, freedom of opinion, freedom of expression, you know. It takes away the moral high ground whatsoever in the protests. <laughs> That's how people got very extremely angry. Again, the young man, I mean, at most, he was a protester. At most, he could be committing some crime. But did he deserve a shot right here in the chest, and which almost took his life? I think you should not just focus on a protester being shot. You should look at the whole sequence. They were attacking a policeman. A policeman was outnumbered and was being attacked rather savagely. And another policeman had to help him. I think the, the police fired live rounds on all occasions, from what I've seen, totally in accordance with the instructions in the training manual to defend themselves and to protect other people's lives and to protect their weapons. Uh, so pe people shouldn't single out teenagers being shot uh, as some sort of evidence of police brutality. Myself,我自己的身份,我是一個老師,我首先會用一個老師的角度去思考 
It's time to wake up. No civilized society can tolerate this dangerous and even deadly level of violence, regardless of their political motives. You cannot fight for freedom of speech by silencing people who disagree with you. You cannot fight for democracy by terrorizing the public to force others to support you. It will take a much greater effort in public communication. I think we will have to launch an honest and in-depth community-wide debate about all the issues bothering Hong Kong people, especially the young people who set their minds at ease. I'm sure Hong Kong people are more than willing to leave all our differences aside and focus on what is you know, most striking. It could be the economy, um, it could be the rebuilding of the system itself, things like that. At the end of the day, it, it, well, you, know, it can't, you can't restore everything overnight. It, it has to take a bit of time. But it's always up to the leaders to lead Hong Kong people to a better future. <laughs>